Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was just reading in the book of Luke, and I want to share it with you. Uh, we're in Luke 17, going down to verse 22. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples about the end time. So he's telling them, um, comparing with Noah's day and Lot's day, how things will look. And uh, he's cautioning them, you know, don't, if someone says, uh, lo, he's here, lo, he's there. No, that's not how he's coming back. So he's not going to be off in the desert somewhere and we go there to find him or something like that. Verse 22, and he said unto the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. So Lot was the righteous man living in Sodom, and the angels pulled him out right before the Lord rained fire and brimstone down on the unrighteous there. Verse 30 even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. So he's saying, remember Lot's wife. Well, what was the deal with Lot's wife? She was told not to look back. The angels have them by the hands, getting them out of Sodom. And she looks back. She looks back. And uh, with the times that we are in, we are doing all we can to get people on the righteous track. That Jesus is coming soon. We've told them, we've warned them that we are in those days and times when the Lord is coming back. But when he is coming back, when he is taking his people out, we need to remember Lot's wife and not look back. We do all we can now to get people on board to go to heaven with Jesus. But at the time that he's taking us, we've got to just be full focus on the Lord and not looking back. It's it's. Because just in that moment, you're either in with the Lord or you're not. And there's no time to look back at that point. Verse 33, Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Praise the Lord. So we know when the Lord comes... It's going to be nighttime in parts of the world. It's going to be daytime in parts of the world. We see there's two people in bed. There's women that are grinding. There are men working in the field. So just life as normal. 
life hasn't been interrupted. They'll be marrying and drinking and eating, giving in marriage, and uh, life will be going on like it was in the days of Noah, in the days of Lot, when the Lord brings his judgment, when he removes his people out of the way, and the wrath of God is poured out on those who have flaunted sin and evil in his face. You know, I don't know how much time we have. You know, look at all the threatenings around the world. War is stirred up. Wars and rumors of wars, as Matthew 24 tells us. And uh, we are there, aren't we? And, of course, we are praying for Israel, the Middle East, all of the tensions that are there. And, uh, you know, much is... Uh, coming against America, too. A lot of people in America really aren't even aware of uh, the dangerous spot we are in, and uh, they're, they're just going about their business, you know. Uh, as long as we can get up and go to work and still go to the store and the car still starts and we can get some groceries, uh, you know, it's just business as usual. But we are in those times that the Lord told us to watch for. And he's told his people, when you see all this happening, look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. So that is where the people who believe in Jesus, that's where your focus is. We are looking up for our redemption draweth nigh. And uh, we're praying for our world because it's not the will of God that any perish. And we are in agreement with him. Turn, turn, turn. Repent before the Lord. Bow your knee. Jesus is the only way to the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Know that we are in days of deception. And the Lord told us in Matthew 24, when he first told his disciples, and they were asking about the end time, he said, Do not be deceived. Be not deceived. Well, look at all the deception, propaganda and lies, continual lies going out. And um, you need to stop your ears to the lies. Don't, don't keep taking in lies. You know, if you keep listening to something long enough, you can start believing it. And the enemy knows how to give you a little truth and then add the twist of a lie. And... Uh, he gets a stranglehold on you at that point. So let's focus on truth. What is truth? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. These words are life to all that find them. When you're reading the word of God, you're reading truth. And you're reading powerful words that change lives. And we need that change. We need to... Uh, leave the world's thinking and embrace the word of God and have this new mindset. We need to return to godly ways and we have that instruction in the word of God. He will renew our minds as long as we are diligent to go before him to pray, to seek his face in the word of God we can have our minds renewed and we can understand what truth is and we won't be deceived if we are filling ourselves with his truth. Well, I love you. Jesus loves you more. We're praying for our world. Uh, we're not in fear. We are aware of what is going on, but our trust is in the Lord. We're trusting the Lord with all of our heart and not leaning on our own understanding. But we are acknowledging him in all of our ways, and we know that he will guide our path when we do so. Well, if you need to give your heart to the Lord, I pray that you will obey Acts 238. For those of you that have joined me and have been listening, reminding you to memorize the Lord's Prayer, Psalm 23 and Psalm 91. I have those posted separate a few videos back where you can... Uh, Say it along with me while I'm reading it to you till you have them memorized. And go from there, memorizing other scriptures that build you up and learning songs that lift up your spirit.
Praise God. I love you. Be blessed.